Hi, it's Dwyer. <clears throat> RichardDwyer.com, uh, keepingitfree.blogspot.com. I'm a civil attorney here in Northern California, and I like to follow cases in the news. I've just listened to episode 12 of Serial concerning the case of Adnan Saeed. This video is intended to follow up on my earlier video, uh, and it's really intended for people who have followed this case through the Serial Podcast. Let me say this. They make the point in episode 12 that the infamous Nisha call, which is reflected on the cell phone telephone billing of Adnan Saeed, might have been a call made to a phone that did not pick up. Right? As you may recall, Nisha did not have voicemail. Right? If this call was made, it's troublesome because Adnan Saeed claims that he didn't have his phone during this relevant time period. And the person who did, his friend Jay, didn't know Nisha, wouldn't have a reason to call her. So the Saeed supporters say that, well, it's possible that this call happened during this time period because Nisha's number was programmed into Adnan's cell phone. The idea is that Jay, his friend, could have butt-dialed Nisha, right, by accident, and that the call didn't have to be answered by Nisha, right, could have continued ringing if it rang longer than 30 seconds. Apparently, it would be reflected in the cell phone records. Right? So that's the argument the Saeed people are making. Because understand, right, if Adnan Saeed made the call himself, then his timeline is completely fraudulent. Then he's with his phone at a time when he claimed he wasn't. Right? Now let me say this. I have a problem here. Now keep in mind, my position is simply that Saeed shouldn't have been convicted because we don't know the timeline beyond a reasonable doubt. The prosecution hasn't met their burden of proof, right? Parts of the story don't add up. Their main witness, Jay, has given conflicting statements. This isn't enough to convict someone of murder. But I myself don't believe Saeed. I believe he's lying. Right? One man's opinion. I believe this Nisha call underscores the lying. In other words, in my opinion, Saeed may well have done this crime. It just hasn't been proven by the state. Let's talk about why the fact that the Nisha call may not have been answered by Nisha and still would have been reflected in the call log, and so it's possible that it was a butt dial by Jay and not an actual call by Adnan Saeed. The reason why that's troubling is that it completely ignores Nisha's own testimony. Right? Keep in mind, I understand her testimony has timeline problems. But understand, she clearly remembers getting a call one day, Saeed being on the phone, Saeed telling her that he was with his friend Jay, and then handing Jay the phone. She clearly remembers that. Now keep in mind, one of the mysteries of this case is that Saeed didn't know Jay that well. Keep in mind, there's no evidence of any other time, ever, when there was a call made by Saeed's phone to Nisha where Saeed is with Jay. This is the only time we know of where Saeed made such a call and Jay was with him. Right? Keep in mind the two guys aren't that close. Keep in mind the timing of the call. It's in the middle of the school day, right? How many of these calls could there possibly be? 
you know, absent some evidence that Jay was with Syed some other time when this call happened, right? When a call to Nisha happened, I have to believe that Nisha's recollection of receiving a call from Syed where he actually has Jay with him and puts Jay on the phone that had to have happened the day that Hay goes missing. Right? Let's think this through just a little bit too. If you believe that Hay gets killed before she is to pick up right, her young family relative, then this call would have taken place right after the murder, right, shortly thereafter, within two hours of the murder, right, now you can just imagine how schemers think. Isn't it highly unusual, in your opinion, that a guy would call a girl he wants to get with and then say, hey, I'm here with my boy who you don't even know. In fact, let me put him on the phone. Don't you get the feeling that something odd's going on here? That this call might reflect some kind of attempt to create an alibi? Right? Might be some attempt to put Saeed with Jay so the two guys can support each other on where they were and then have a third party witness, someone who could say, hey, I got a call these two guys were together? Could this even be darker? Could this be Syed trying to pressure Jay? Trying to let Jay know, hey look, I killed my ex-girlfriend and now my friend knows that I was with you shortly after the murder took place. You talk to the police, I'm going to implicate you in this, and my friend's going to be a supporting witness. Right? This Nisha call is still troubling. Even if the call could have been made by a butt dial, I don't think it was. Right? If you follow Saeed's contention, the call on the day of the murder is a butt dial, then there's a second day when he calls Nisha and he's hanging with Jay we know the two guys didn't hang out much after this murder let's talk about another revelation from episode 12 they actually talk with Don Hay's boyfriend at the time of her disappearance and he tells us that Hay was a very decisive, very focused person. She knew what she wanted. She pursued him. He's older than her, but she pursues him. He has a girlfriend at the time, but she pursues him. She's not passive aggressive. She's up front. She knows what she wants, right? Sounds like a type A personality. Now we get a hint of this because she has several friends who when she initially goes missing, many of them think that she has taken off to California. Right? Apparently, Hay had talked in the past about just taking off to California where a family member lived. Right? They actually knew her personality and thought she was capable of that. Right? Some teen just saying, hey, this is stale. Let me go see the world. Now that's who she is. She sounds strong-willed. She sounds like she's present in the moment. She's conscious. Life isn't happening to her. She's steering the ship. Now the reason why that's important in my book, and I'm not a criminal profiler, right? We're just talking here friend to friend. I'm just another listener of the serial podcast just like you. But the reason that's important is when she broke up with Saeed, you get the feeling that from her perspective it was over. Right? She's not weak-minded and someone who, you know, 
isn't aware of the opportunities around her, right? No, this is different, right? This is a woman who, according to her boyfriend at the time she went missing, pursued him, right? Strong-willed, strong-minded. When it's over with Syed and she has made the break mentally and she has a different guy she's pursuing, then she starts going out with Don, right? They've been going out for 13 whole days at the time of her disappearance, right? She's on to the next chapter of her life story. Now, you could imagine this might have been devastating to Saeed, especially since when Saeed gets this new cell phone, right? She's one of the first people he calls, along with Nisha, by the way, to give this phone number, right? Adnan's supposed to be popular at school, right? He's supposed to be a popular kid. Isn't he like homecoming king or something? And with all his friends, with all his buddies, one of the first people he calls is his ex-girlfriend. I'm guessing he's not over her. Sounds to me like he's still emotionally caught up with her. You're talking about an ex-girlfriend who's a type A personality who probably told him, hey, it's over, and in fact I'm with someone else. Right? She's going out with Doc. At the time, Saeed calls her. Keep in mind, the call is very early in the morning. Right? You get the feeling Saeed is still caught up on her. Just like Jay claimed he was. Let's talk about another thing that to me is interesting. Let's talk about Jay. You know, Jay is supposed to have been a stoner type. Right? In fact, they're, according to witnesses, smoking the afternoon of the murder. Right, He himself admits that he was involved possibly in the sale of pot. Right, He has a girlfriend. I believe this is very important. Her name is Stephanie. It's supposed to be Stephanie's birthday. According to several people, Right, as mentioned over the episodes on Serial. He deeply loves Stephanie. Right, Stephanie actually appears with him in court. They have a deep relationship. According to Jay, he's even afraid that Adnan might try to hurt Stephanie. Right? In my opinion, when you hear about a guy who is in love, who's a stoner guy, who's clearly too disorganized to give police the same story every time, right? The facts keep changing. In other words, he's not an organized guy. He's different. He's a stoner who's in love who's disorganized. Right? I just don't buy that an empathetic guy like this, whose friends believe he's completely incapable of doing a murder, would kill Hay or participate in any part of a killing of Hay without Adnan Saeed's participation. In other words, Jay sounds like he's just a stoner guy who is hanging out, he has his woman, he has his life, he has his, you know, uh, setup. He doesn't want to go to prison. Keep in mind, his statements have been consistent in this regard. Right? He was fearful that Syed was going to drop dime on him to the police about his drug dealing. Now think about it. That shows you the guy's not a hardened criminal. He's worried about getting busted for dealing pot. Right? I don't believe this is a guy who would have killed Hay on his own. 
I just don't. He strikes me as too empathetic. If he has a girlfriend and he has a deep relationship, if he has a bond with another person, I don't see how he could just view Hay as an object and kill her on his own. He doesn't even know Hay. Think about it. He's no longer at the high school. Right? He's out of school. Think about it. Right? He's too disorganized to decide, in my opinion, to kill Hay during a school day. Especially since, let's be real here, he's using Syed's car that day. It's his girlfriend's birthday. Day. His girlfriend believes so much in him she shows up in court with him. Right? Too much is going on that day in Jay's life for Jay to then say, hey, you know what? It's my girl's birthday. I have a car. A friend's lent me the car for the day. Let me go kill someone. Now, if you believe Syed, Aren't his people really saying that Jay was involved in the murder, Syed knew nothing about it? Isn't the Syed position really preposterous? It's, hey, you know what? I just happened to lend my car and my phone to a friend who I really wasn't best friends with. And then that friend killed my ex-girlfriend. Isn't that story ridiculous? You know, let me say this too. They then go hang around Jay's friends later that day. Right? And Jay's friends sense something is wrong. Right? Jay's a bit chatty. Now, it's interesting. On the last episode of Serial, they actually have a guy who worked at the porn store with Jay. Talk about how Jay may have called the cops himself later to turn himself in because Jay knew that they were asking around about him. Right? Don't you get the feeling, isn't Jay's behavior really consistent with a guy who's slowly coming to the realization that he can't be complicit in some idiotic murder that his friend, who's not his best friend, has done? Let's go further, too. Doesn't it look like a setup to you? Right? Adnan gives Jay, who's not his best friend, his brand new cell phone. Who gets a brand new cell phone and then decides immediately to give it to a friend to use? Isn't that a little bit out there? The connection between the guys is the fact that Adnan knew Jay's girlfriend, Stephanie. Right? And so understand, Adnan doesn't know Jay that well. They know each other through his girl. Do you buy the contention? Because I have a problem with it. That Adnan would get a new phone and then would immediately hand it to a guy who's not his best friend. Supposedly to help that guy celebrate his girlfriend's birthday with his girlfriend. Right? Isn't Jay's story a little bit more believable? That he got the phone and then Adnan told him, Look, you know, I'm going to call you after I have done this murder. Let's talk about another problem here. School ends that day. Right? Now, if there's a group that you would think would support you, 
especially if the police are crazy enough to think that you have committed a murder you would think it would be your crew the guys you go to school with wouldn't they have your back now it's interesting because multiple friends of Saeed multiple say that Saeed asked Hey, for a ride. Now let me just say this. Doesn't that leap out at you? Because isn't the asking for a ride only the first part of that fact chain? Because keep in mind, I could be with you. And I could hear you ask a friend for a ride. But if the friend says, no, nah, I'm sorry. I got things to do. Then I would continue to see you hanging around campus, wouldn't I? Because you haven't gotten a ride, have you? Right, you would, you would still be on school grounds. So when the friends say that they heard Adnan ask Hey for a ride, aren't they also implying that to the best of their knowledge, Adnan took the ride? Now, Saeed claims he didn't ask Hay for a ride. Okay, that's fine. Let's say the friends, because high school can be a brutal place, let's say the friends have an axe to grind. They think Atnan is some spoiled brat, and they want to play games and make statements against his interests, even though they know the charge is murder, or that a classmate has disappeared. Right? Even though they know the charges are serious. Now, let's cross the friends out. Let's forget about them. Right? Just for purposes of this conversation, let's just pretend for a moment that all high school students are unreliable witnesses. There's a cop who claims that Saeed told him that he had asked Hey for a ride that day. Now let me just say this. Why would the cop make this up? Let's say the police are corrupt, and let's say the police want to frame Saeed, right? Let me just say, wouldn't he be a poor candidate to frame? Because you're talking about a guy who's on a high school campus, right? A lot of people are around. How do I know that dozens of people haven't seen this guy? while the crime is allegedly taking place someplace else. Why would a cop lie about what Saeed told him that day? Right? Do you buy the cops are trying to frame Saeed angle? Because I don't. Right? I'm really going to try to frame the honor student? Really? I'm going to try to frame the ex-boyfriend? Really? And then by chance, other witnesses say that Saeed asked for a ride? Isn't that troubling? Let me ask too. And it really does need to be asked. How could Saeed's alibi on the day in question at a crowded high school be so poor. I know there are people like Asia McLean out there who claim that she saw Saeed. How come more people didn't see Saeed? If I'm in a crowded location where the people know me, keep in mind this isn't a movie theater where everyone's anonymous. This is a school where the people are attending school with you every day. People know me. Why aren't there dozens of people who can say, hey, we saw Saeed after school let out? Keep in mind, he doesn't have his car. If you believe him, he doesn't take a lift with hay. Oddly enough, there's nobody else he took a lift with. Oddly enough, there's nobody else he seemed to hang around. Right? There's no security camera that could, you know, record his image. Right? No teachers could say, hey, yeah, 
I was here in this room and I saw him at this time. How come there's so few people on the day of the murder who saw Saeed right after school lets out? How come it's murky where he was after school lets out? How come his memory is that bad? Keep in mind, even if a teacher doesn't come forward and say, hey, I saw him. How come Saeed can't say, you know what, after school let out, I ran into Mr. Johnson over here by the gym. And then the cops talked to Mr. Johnson and Mr. Johnson could say, yeah, you know, come to think of it, you are right, I did see Saeed. Right? How come Saeed can't come up with anything better than, hey, I, you know, I'm not really sure what I was doing. Right? I'm, you know, I don't really know what I was doing. It was just a day like every other day. Let's also profile this just a little bit more. You know, aren't you concerned that Saeed's personality is such that he's conscious of the fact that it's the birthday of Jay's girlfriend? Right? That's the level of social awareness we're talking about. He's aware of the couple. He's aware of a female friend's birthday. That's who he is. Right? Also understand he gets his phone. One of the first people he calls with his information is Hay, the eventual murder victim. Right? She's dead within days. Right? Now given that personality, do you buy the idea that someone he knew well, his ex-girlfriend, right? Someone who presumably has more meaning to him, he's had more involvement with than Stephanie J's girlfriend, right? Aren't you concerned that the ex-girlfriend goes missing and this guy never calls her? Right? Now I know in episode 12 they point out that her current boyfriend, at the time she goes missing, the older guy, Don, doesn't call her either. But we don't know Don's personality. We know Adnan Syed's personality. He's the kind of guy who knew Stephanie's birthday. He's plugged in on that level. Right? He gets his phone it's not a, hey, I get my phone, I'll, I'll figure out what I'm going to do with it later. No, it's I get my phone, then late at night, I'm staying up and I'm advising people of the phone number. I'm not waiting until the next day in school where I say, hey, you know what, I, I got this phone. And here's No, no, that, that day I'm calling people after midnight and I call hey. Now, if he has that much interest in hey, who he had gone out with, right? Is it believable that he wouldn't call her after she goes missing from school? Now his argument on the serial show is he just thought, oh, he's going to get in trouble with her parents. Would that be your reaction? Right? He goes missing the first day. Hey goes missing the second day. Hey goes missing the third day. Doesn't there come a day when you call her number and say, girl, where are you at? What, what's going on? Where you call her number just to make sure it hasn't been disconnected? After all, she's one of the first people you gave your cell phone number to. Right? And so, I don't believe... Adnan Saeed for a second. That Nisha call is troubling to me. Right? I mean, it's not just the fact that the call's on the bill. It's that Nisha remembers Adnan saying to her in a phone call, I'm with Jay. Let me put him on the phone. 
Think about it. I'm with Jay. Let me put him on the phone. Right? There's there's no evidence. We know Saeed just got his phone. Right? He just got his phone. There's no evidence he's with Jay any other day to make that statement. So the butt dial defense doesn't work for me. Right? Then, of course, the issue of, you know, hey, can I get a lift? How could multiple friends have heard him say that and he didn't say that? Think about how unlucky he'd have to be. By chance, your ex-girlfriend goes missing. By chance, you're one of the last people seen talking to her. By chance, multiple people believe they know what you said in the conversation. By chance, a police officer claims you told the cop that you got a lift from her. Doesn't this sound like a bit much? How many by chances are there? Let's talk about Best Buy. Now I'll agree. Jay's version of events isn't reliable. I wouldn't have voted to convict. I would have voted to acquit. But now we know that in fact there may have been a pay phone. Not outside the Best Buy, but inside the Best Buy. Right now we know. Aren't you troubled too that the cell phone records, the tower pinging, seems to indicate that Adnan doesn't have an alibi for when Jay says they were burying the body. Understand if Jay, curiously, goes out on his own and decides to kill Adnan's girlfriend, Right? If, if Jay does that on his own, Adnan could have had a rock-solid alibi if he were, you know, someplace else. If he could point to different cell towers and say, hey, I wasn't at the, you know, park. I was over here. Look at these records. He can't do that, can he? Right? If Jay's telling the cops some tall tale, wouldn't it be too high risk for Jay to say, yeah, then we were in the park burying the body? When Adnan could discredit the whole thing by saying, look at these cell phone tower pings. I'm over here visiting Joe. You know, whoever. Right, Sue. I'm with Nisha. Adnan can't even do that. Think about it. Let me say this too, and I thought this was a loaded lie, right? Jay takes Adnan over to meet his friends who don't know him the day of the murder. It's unusual, right? The friends remember it. They recall Adnan just by chance saying, hey, how do I get rid of this high, right? He has things to do. Right, something's going on in his life where he needs to get rid of the high. But we know he's not home with his parents. Right, we know that. Do you believe it's a coincidence then? Do you believe Jay is savvy enough to have killed Hay or participated in the murder of Hay without Adnan knowing? And then do you think Jay would after that murder then pick up Adnan and take him to the friend's place and then do you think by chance Adnan would be asking how to get down off the high he's on right before the body is presumably buried in Lincoln Park do you believe that's the timeline or do you believe something else is going on? Right? So, put me among those who, you know, I don't consider Adnan Saeed to be a hero. You know, I, I can't consider him to be some guy, you know, framed for this crime by the state. It doesn't look that way to me. 
right? What it looks like is that the facts are muddled in part because Jay is disorganized, can't keep his story straight, right? But it's exactly because Jay can't keep his story straight. And it's because Adnan openly admits Jay wasn't one of his best friends, but yet he's giving Jay his new phone. He's giving Jay the use of his car when he doesn't even have transportation from campus? It's because of Adnan's actions, which can be verified by the phone record of this Nisha call. Right? Keep in mind, Nisha can't even testify that, hey, I got some, you know, butt dial call that day. Right? No, the theory is that the phone just happens to dial Nisha's number that day and then shows up on the billing at a time when Adnan's not by the phone. Then, of course, Nisha remembers a call from Adnan where she says, hey, I'm with Jay. Right, folks, if that's the same call, Adnan's with Jay that day. Right after, hey, misses the pickup of her young relative, right? Just as she goes missing, Adnan is with Jay. Think about that, right? And then this idea of, no, I didn't ask her for a ride. How many people have to contradict that contention for us to openly question it, right? Because if he asked her for a ride, then this inquiry is going down a different road. How could he admit to having asked her for a ride? Right? Multiple classmates claim he did. The cop claims he admitted it. Right? I guess Adnan figured out that, hey, if I asked her for a ride, how could I explain what happened over that next hour? How could I explain where she dropped me off? Right? Think about it. Not only that, it would blow his timeline. He would have gotten a ride off campus, right? He wants to put himself on campus. Well, if he's at the high school, where are the dozens of people who see him that day? Why does it come down to Asia McLean? Let's also defer just a little bit to his attorney. Let me say this. If I'm the client and you're my attorney, and some witness has come forward and said, no, 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 I was with Rich in the library when this murder is supposed to have taken place. Isn't there going to come a time where I turn around and I say to you, hey, Attorney Sarah, when are we going to have that witness on the witness stand? <laughs> you know, I'm not an attorney. In life I am, but let's pretend I'm not. I'm not an attorney, but I think this might be significant. Right? <laughs> you, know, you tell me, how come we don't have absolute outrage by Adnan Saeed that his attorney didn't contact Asia McClay? Isn't this the kind of thing you would write your attorney about and say, I demand that you call this witness? Isn't this something you would take up with the judge? Wouldn't this be the kind of thing you would fire your attorney over? You know, you're with someone at the time the murder takes place. Then the attorney doesn't want to call that person. Right? Forget attorney diligence. Isn't this the kind of witness who you, the defendant, would say, hey, hold up, hold up. Before this goes to the jury, I need to have this person called as a witness. Right? My take in listening to Serial is that Adnan kind of shrugs shoulders, right? He's ho-hum about Asia McClain. I've heard her talk. It's interesting. Maybe the timeline is off that the prosecution's presenting. I believe it is. I don't buy their timeline. I wouldn't have convicted him. But, right, my point to you is simply, if she's accurately remembering this, Right? Who do you blame for her not being called as a witness? When does the defendant actually get some blame? 
right? Let me point out too, if you're the defendant and they say to you, hey, you know, you're on trial because your ex went missing this day. Wouldn't you say, look, man, I, you know, I was in the library. You know, if Asia McLean comes forward, wouldn't you say, look, you know, that's right. I was in the library. These were the people in the library. How come Saeed can't even help his defense on that level? I question his story. Right, let's just say I would have voted not guilty. Not because I believe he's innocent, but because I believe the state hasn't proved its case. But let's just say, unless some other evidence comes out, Adnan Saeed's not a hero of mine. He's not someone I view as having been framed by the state or by Jay for this murder. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. I hope you visit us at, well, my firm site, richarddwyer.com, as well as keepingitfree.blogspot.com. Thanks for stopping by.